Good morning. Welcome to Grace Church today. If you are uh, normally coming, good to see you again. And if you are new, welcome. We are excited to have you, and it's great to see all these faces today. We do have a special guest that's going to be up here, Steve Stroh. So definitely get excited about what he's going to be telling us today. Nice to switch it up from time to time. Um, it is February, so a new month. If you didn't get your jump start for a new start in 2023 in January, just start now. It's February. We won't tell anybody. We'll just start now. So we do have a new bulletin. So if you didn't get one on the way in, get one on the way out. All the new events are in there. All kinds of stuff. Ladies' breakfast is listed in there. That's actually changed. It's no longer going to be at the Vogel's Bake Shop. It's going to be right here in the Fellowship Hall. So we will get that updated. Um, we have a new women's Bible study listed in there, a men's Bible study, an FCA volleyball all-nighter for those who choose to stay up all night as opposed to those who have to. Um, if you guys like to do that, definitely check that out. Um, so yeah, make sure you get a bulletin on the way out so you see everything that's going on here at Grace Church. And then we do have a special interview today. Bill and Linda Metzger are going to come up and introduce themselves today. Hello. Um, so first, just tell us a little bit about yourselves. Just kind of introduce yourselves. Well, I'm Linda Metzger, and I will say <laughs> um, we do a dinner here at the church. Uh, we've done it for 18 years and probably do it to another 18 years. And as far as being here at the church, um, I uh, went to Sunday school as a kid at Grace. I was confirmed at Grace when I was 11 and joined the church. And I was married at Grace, and I wouldn't want to be any place else but here. <laughs> okay, I went to Walnut Grove and uh, went to Moulton School. And when I come to freshman year in high school, I met Linda. And, uh, <laughs> well, anyhow, I think about midway through sophomore year, she just was two weeks into being 17, and I was just turned 18, and we got our marriage license and signed up for the draft the same day. Got married December 4th, 1965, and uh, I worked 30 years as an electrical lineman. Mid-70s, we got in the sawmill logging business, and she would run the head saw, and I'd carry off the boards and everything. And, well, I never was known for patience, and <laughs> I'd get barking at her like a coon dog, and she'd get mad and climb out of the cab and head for the house, and I'd be right behind her. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and she'd turn around and come back. Well, one night she went to the house and didn't come back. So the sawmill laid idle, and I just started buying timber and cutting timber and trucking timber around the state you know, in Indiana. And, uh, and over... You know, the moral of the story, I guess, is don't bark at your partner. You're going to be working by yourself. <laughs> and then the old timers told me years ago when I was a young man that uh, they said, don't ever marry a young girl for her looks because after 50 years or so, you start looking like her. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. How am I going to follow that? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Well, hey, hey, I am. Yes, yes. I want to talk about the two candles that are lit there. If you don't know this, we have some movies there. There are always two candles that should be lit, and it's the first one on the left. It represents inviting God into our service. The second one is inviting His Son. So He is present because we we have invited Him and want Him present. At the, At the end, end of the, the service, service, those candles are extinguished, and then that, that light goes out of the world. <coughs> Each one of you will go out, and you remember, remember, you have that spirit of them within you, you. so you, you shine, shine in our community, because, because I'm taught a lot of you, and I expect, I expect that out of you, but I just want to thank like you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, um, like I said, I am excited about this. I, I, I lo love the opportunity. It's something I wasn't trained in, but I just uh, got, God has gave me a message. But we're, we're going to open up here with a word of prayer. And um, 
I know sometimes Bev take, take, takes requests and, and, and different things, but I want you guys to just uh, think of somebody you would, you would want to pray with. I'm going to give you a little bit of silent time where you can pray, pray, pray for that person. I have a couple of re re requests I know of. There's this family. It, it, it's a sharp. So the boys have came, but they've been going, going through some different things with the grandma, Caden, uh, one, one, one of the boys, um, the uncle, Uncle Rex. I went up and visited him in the hospital and got, and got a pray with the family, so it, it, it was a blessing, you know, they're just learning more and more ab about the Lord, the power of prayer when, when you get that opportunity, and the other one is, uh, I, I, I definitely want to pray for my mom, she's uh, 100 years old, and she fell on Friday and broke her hip, so she, she, had, she had surgery, but um, she's fine, she never had surgery, and a couple things she said in the emergency room, she said, um, at a funeral, she wanted them to say that she never had surgery or broken bone, but she ruined that. <laughs> and then, and then, as they were saying what the prognosis is, I mean, she's she's fine. She's sitting up now. She said, "I guess I only lived 105 now." You know, I mean, she, so so she just had that great attitude. That's an attitude we we we, we need to have. So I'm going to give you guys, you know, 30, 40 seconds here. Just just think of somebody that you want to pray with, lift up, and then that then I will close this, and then we'll turn it over to worship. Dear God, I just want to lift up all all these requests that are coming up to you now. The, the, there's uh, everybody around this congregation, you know, are just li li lifting up requests and praises of, you know, situations that are going on in their life, situations that are going on in their family's life, situations that, that that are going on with people they know, and maybe they don't have an ending to praying about. They're just they're just thanking you for giving them another day, Lord. As we lift up, you know, the Sharps and Gladys Stroh and and other and, and other people, Lord, we we know that you are hearing. Um, but let us um, hear, hear what you have to say back to us because uh, sometime in prayer we just, we, we just get rushing and we don't hear for your response, Lord. But let us uh, continue to lift these prayers up and know that you will answer. You will answer on your time, Lord. Um, bless this day. Bless everything ab about this service. We also want to uh, um, you know, uh, bl bless Joe and Bev. Or, uh, they are down at um, C C Columbus at the uh, baptism of their granddaughter Sadie Joe, Lord, we just pray pray for that that whole that whole um, celebration, Lord. We just want to lift up the, the state of you. We thank you and we ask all this in your name. And 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 as Mark and them come up, I just want to read something. It's something I shared last night with the with the Sharps, and uh, and I know Coach Reams could probably just uh, recite this from, from from memory. But it's something as as we get burdened and life starts getting on top of us, um, wearing us down. Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Good morning, Grace. How's everything going so far? Exactly, because I haven't sang a note yet. But, uh, no, uh, we have uh, got an invitation from Joe to come back. I think every time he gets really desperate, he gives me a call. So, anyway, you're stuck with us today. But I do want to introduce a couple new people uh, to the platform with me. My better half, Jill Bird, over here on the right, is going to help us today singing. And then uh, my good friend, or our good friend, from Lima, Ohio, Christina Brockert is here with violin. So uh, we invite you to participate in worship however you feel like you want to participate. If you want to sit, if you want to stand, if you want to lift your hands, if you want to look like a statue, anything you want to do is totally cool, right? But we're going to bless the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Where streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. 
blessed be your name when they're found in the desert place the walk through the wilderness blessed be your name bless you pour out I'll turn back to pray when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering there's pain in the offering words teaching 
away from home Sheds his coat song for you to participate with now. Somebody said thank you. <laughs> it's like this. Can you guys uh, repeat after me? You guys can do that. Our God, Our God is an awesome God. Is an awesome God. Isn't that easy? Our God, Our God is an awesome God. Is an awesome God. All right. We're going to do this together, right? This helps me if you help me, right? That's great. Rolls up the sleeves, the angels putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There is thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. Now the Lord wasn't choking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close and so you better be believing that a God is an awesome God. Is it all? The sky was starless in the void of the night. Our God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. Now the judgment and wrath he poured out on Sodom. The mercy and grace that he gave us at the cross. 
something we have not to quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. So now love our God is an awesome God. It's our God is an awesome God. We're getting ready. We're going to have communion now. I think I have some people that will distribute the elements. They could head up. All right. And in this time, time of communion, what we're going to do, we're just going to come in in the aisles. You'll come in, go to the right or the left. They'll ask you, you know, accept the body and the blood of Christ. You can go over there, if you do it, and go, go off to the side. But, um, you know, the Bible talks about that in, in, in 1 Corinthians. Any, you know, anybody can accept it if you have that right relationship with Jesus Christ. And, the, and most of you have it, but a lot of us have something going on in our lives at this time. So take a few minutes here, just, just examine your heart, heart of the people coming up. You know, um, if there's something that's absolutely keeping you from communion, you know, then, th th then you shouldn't, shouldn't uh, take it. But you could, you have this time to just, you know, ask God for forgiveness. Say, man, make make, make me right, and then come up and enjoy it. Any of the kids ki kids that are re re ready that have accepted Christ can can, can come up too, and then then you, then you go back and sit down. So, yeah, they're all ready, so we can just start coming up. Is the body of Christ? 
Perfect. Thank you. Now it's time for kids' church. So anybody 30 and under, you're more than welcome to 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 to, to leave and go back. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> about 20 some years too late. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, so all the kids can head on out. That'd be great. Everybody ready for this? I, I, I hope so. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm 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 excited, excited to be here. I'm going to o- open up in a word of prayer, and then and, and then we'll get in this. So you can please bow your heads, dear God. I just thank thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the words that you've put 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 into me, and let them, let me just be clear in speaking, uh, Lord. That it just uh, uh, bless blesses the people here, Lord, and uh, just let us continue to grow closer and closer to you. We thank you for the worship, for the communion, for the for, for the kids that are leaving, and just thank thank you for this beautiful day. We love you, Lord, and we ask this in your name. Amen. All right, cool. Yeah, well, um, I have guest spoke a few times at the church when it was on, on uh, Columbia. It's been, it's been about a year and a half, but Bev got a hold of me about two or three weeks ago, said she was, uh, her and Joe were going to go to Columbus because their granddaughter, granddaughter was being baptized, asked if I would uh, fill in, and I text back immediately, yes, because I, I have a... Uh, a message that has been brewing in my heart heart for a while, um, and how it got how how it got started. Um, I'm going to give a little background. There's a friend of mine, uh, Pastor Nathan from Lima. He's uh, he was he's involved with FCA. He was involved with Revive. He's just a uh, really really neat guy. But he he had a guest speaker that came in earlier in the summer. A guy by the name of Gary Reston from from, from Salina, and I met him about 10 years ago when I was involved with a, a, a youth ministry. We met a several nights a week, week in my house. Gary was from Tech. He lived in Texas, but he was from Ohio, and he did some sales, and this was part, part of his area. He was making some sales calls. Uh, a mutual friend got a hold of me and said, Gary would like to speak to teenagers because that, 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 that was his passion. So he came to my, my house one night. We had almost 100 teenagers and adults down my basement. And he gave just an amazing message. Um, several kids got saved. And it, it, it was just uh, the Lord was really wor- working that night. And then in the meantime, Gary got involved with uh, um, FCA in Texas. He came up several times, spoke at different FCA groups. He spoke at All Nighter. You know, I. Lisa and I went down to visit them. I've spoke, spoken there, and we've just developed a really, really great, great re- relationship. But he, uh, 
he talked, you know, like I said, he, he, he talked at that church, and uh, I wanted to go talk a little, a little bit now about, you know, s- some of the, the spiritual gifts. You know, Gary has this special gift, as you know, a lot of people in his church have, have these gifts, and it's appropriate because we're right in the middle of the spiritual gifts. I know you ladies are doing it. Um, the men, we're getting ready to start. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. I hope you guys join it. We just finished a, a, a great study, a Tony Dungy book, Quiet Strength, where we had about eight or ten men on that. But, but the spiritual gifts is, is going to be a great one. Um, but there's, and, and there's a few verses in the Bible that talk about the spiritual gifts. And before I get going, I know we've talked about, you know, bringing your Bibles, reading your Bibles, you know, taking notes and things. Um, I'm a big one at notes because I my memory's not what it is. It used to be so every week at church I'm taking notes I know I know Reams has his book out and I would encourage you to take it not to anything I said but there may be a scripture there may be a verse or maybe something from the song I know some of you can do it on your phone but I had a bunch of these pads of papers notebooks in my basement and I brought them so about every second aisle there's about three or four notebooks underneath there on the end so if any of you, I'm not trying to force anybody, we don't have this on camera or anything, but if you want to take notes, you can take a piece of paper, two pieces of paper from that. You could take the whole note and notebook. I mean, I, I bought them at Walmart for 50 cents, so it's not like I'm, I'm out of bunch. But yeah, if you want to take them, I would encourage you to, to get some type of journal, get a notebook, bring in, there may be, there, there may be a nugget that, 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 that you can learn. Um, so so uh, yeah, yeah, I encourage you to do that. But this is from Romans. Where it talks, it talks about our gifts. Romans 12, starting in verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion of his faith. If it is service, serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let it do it che- cheerfully. And and, and, and there's, there's another one in Hebrews 2.4. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. That's it. God distributed his gifts. And they say that all believers have at least one gift. Some people are, ble- are blessed with more. But I guess finding that gift sometimes can be tough. You know, we may think we have a certain gift, but we may not. You know, so just learning what your gift may, may be. Um, and, and I don't know if, sometimes we work outside of our gifts. I mean, we should. It'd be great if we had a couple great gifts, and that's the only thing we had to do. But sometime in a church or in life, you may have to venture out, you know, help out with something that may not be your strongest gift. And I don't know if as you get older, you change gifts. I look back when I was younger, and I thought I had these giftings, and now I look now and I have others. So I don't, I don't really know. But I think we all have those gifts, and the reason I think you need to explore and find out what, what your gift is, I hear a lot of times people are so sure, this is my gift, they won't do anything besides that. Well, I'm, I'm not gifted to pray. I'm, uh, God didn't give me that gift. Well, sometimes you're just called to do, to, to do what you do. I never thought my gift, I'm praying. I mean, I grew up in a church, the prayers were said by the pastor, and you just followed along. I wasn't taught to think or pray on my own or follow the lead in the Holy Spirit. So when I became a believer, that was tough. You know, somebody said pray, and I said, well, give me a card, and I'll pray what's on the card, but but I, I don't know. So it took me a while, and I'm still, sometimes I still get nervous, you know, praying, because I think, man, I hope that sounds right. I hope this person, I hope it makes sense. Well, you know, we're praying, we're pray, praying just to God, and it really came to light with that um, I was going to share this l- l- later on, but with but with the, the the Sharp family, you know, I'm part of the football team, the chaplain. You know, we pray and pray at FCA, and so these young boys, they knew that that I prayed. I wasn't afraid to pray, but their grandma got sick several se- several months ago, and uh, I would, you know, uh, it, it, it's probably been a couple years, and I would go, uh, you know, ask her how's she doing, how's she doing, and I got a text back in late September, early October that. Hey, my grandma's not doing well. You know, can you come up to the hospital and pray? So I dropped what I was doing, drove up to St. Rita's, um, prayed around her with the family, ministered to them, which was kind of out of my comfort zone. But I prayed because they, you know, they didn't think we were going to make it. But I prayed for healing, but I also prayed for God's will. And I laid that out there. If, if, if it's time to take her, you know, we'll let the family be okay. And that, that was kind of hard to do. 
and you know you want all your prayers to be positive you know but I didn't know how it was going to go stay with the family and the next day they said man it's miraculous she's doing well and she's getting getting better and I'm, then, then I keep progress and and uh and they texted me last week and asked if I would pray for their uncle who's going through something. And they said that your prayers saved his life. And I said, no, it, was, it wasn't my prayers. God saved his life. I was just a vehicle. I, 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 I was just obedient. I'm not saying this to build me up, but you never know when you have that opportunity. And sometimes we let those opportunities go. God talks to us, and we, we, we let it pass. And, and most opportunities don't come around a second time. So I just urge you to get in tune get in tune with the holy spirit um to just use whatever gifts you you you, you know you have but there's another another place where, where, where it talks about gifts and that's where i want to get get to and and um if you guys think i'm going to follow some straight path to get to where i'm going no way man i'm gonna be all all over the place you guys will either walk out here and say man that was a great message or what did he talk about man i want to and, and, and I could forward you all my notes, I guess. But uh, there is another, another set of gifts where I don't know. It's not really given to leaders of, of, of the church. But, you know, the other gifts talk about things you do on your own. But some of these other gifts here are what, what, what you can, uh, um, I, I, I suppose it may be leaders in the church. But it's Ephesians 4, starting in verse 11. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And it talks about several things, you know, the, the, the apostles. You know, they were kind of chosen to spread, spread the gospel. Jesus chose them. He knew he was going to leave in three years, and, 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 and they needed to, to, to share the gospel. Um, there's also the, you know, prophets. Prophets, they speak for God. They have divine intervention. Sometimes we think of prophets, the Old Testament prophets, all doom and gloom, you know, they, uh, 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 you know, impending judgment. But also prophets can, you know, speak, you know, bl blessings. There are prophets now. You know, some churches have your prophets that come in that will, you know, talk about somebody. We think more, th think more of the Old Testament prophets. And then it has pastors. You know, pastors, teachers, and preachers are all similar you know, like Bev is our pastor, where she's kind of our shepherd. She leads us and guides us and watches over us. You think of a shepherd where it protects, protects the sheep. That is the pastor's main job. Then you have the teachers. You know, a pastor can be a teacher also. They get up here, they teach, they teach from the Word. You know, our Sunday school teachers, the people that teach the, the uh, kids, the small groups or something, those are teachers too, you know, school, school teachers, somebody that, you know, gives, give, gives wisdom and knowledge to somebody. And then the preachers... Um, they can fall in this category, but I think of the preachers are um, kind of like a coach, you know, before you go out in the field or the court. You know, you give this big, great speech, and you're ready to run, to, to run through a wall. We've all heard those preachers that just, man, afterwards, you're ready, you're, you're ready to conquer the world. And some ch large churches have one, you know, several of each. Sometimes the, the pastor does it all, but, you know, we, we all have a gifting. But, but the, the one I went over is the evangelist. The evangelist... Um, their job, or their role, their, their, their gifting is to just increase the kingdom. They bring the good news to unbelievers. They lead people to, to Christ. And evangelize, I mean, I wish I was a great evangelist. I mean, I've led people to Christ, but that, that gifting, I mean, I, I know a few people that are great at that. A friend of mine, Pastor Rods from Lima, you know, I've done a lot of youth ministry from him, with him. I mean, wherever we go to a place, you know, he'll talk to somebody about Christ. You know, Mark, Mark Bird, Bird's another, man. Every time you go, he's just, that, it, that Holy Spirit just exudes out where, you know, they see it. And he just, you know, talk, talks to people and get to that point, man. You know, because that's that important question. You know, are, are, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? You know, with Revive Ohio, the great thing that they've done, done around Ohio and, and with the different schools. And Gary's, a, Gary's a, another one of those. Every time I'm with him, we'll, we'll be in a restaurant. He'll talk to the waitress. He'll go to somebody the next thing, you know, and just start, start, start evangelizing, you know. But we all have those different gifts, but we can still all evangelize. We can still all share Christ. You know, we may not be the closer, but we may be the person to put that seed in. We may be the waterer, you know. And, but, but I just, uh, yeah, so, so, those, so those, are, those are some of the different gifts. But getting back to Gary's message, he talked, he talked for at least an hour, an hour and 
15 minutes. It, it could have been longer. And that, and, and, and that doesn't bother me. If the, if the Spirit's working and people are talking, man, I could sit there all, all, all day, day to hear it. And Gary, I think he would have went all day, if it, but they rang a little bell in the back. And I, I, I hope Scott didn't have one of those back here. But it was, and one way, partway through this message, he talked about this TV show, The Voice. And I never really heard of that TV show. I might have flipped channels and saw it. Didn't know, didn't know what, what, what it was about, but it was The Voice. How many people have ever seen or watched The Voice? R raise your hand. Okay, is there anybody that's an expert on The Voice? Come on. I mean, you watch it, you've watched it more than five times. You know how it works. Somebody, somebody raise their hand and tell me that you know how The Voice works. I'm going to put you. Okay, Julius, if you get this in. in answer right you knew you, joe asked if i was going to throw fruit but i had to throw something how does the voice work You spend too much time watching the boys, do Oh, uh, huh? It, it bounced off. Okay, well, we're going to, there's a little clip here, which I went home, home and watched it. It, it, it. it isn't too bad of a show, so if you've never seen The Voice, you can watch this, and, and, and I get royalties how many Everything people start watching The Voice. Everything has through The Voice. You can tell so much. It is the true power of music. I can hear a story in your voice. That's what this show is all about. Your voice is so beautiful. Right when you started singing, I knew you were special. I was waiting for something special to happen. You gave it to me. You gave it to me. You gave it to me. Welcome to the Blind Auditions. Four of the biggest stars in the world today. Their backs turn to the stage. All they can hear is the voice. This is how it works. During the blind auditions, to make it onto a team, a coach must push a button. Their chair turns around and the artist joins that coach's team. But if more than one coach hits the button, the power to choose shifts. Now we're gonna start battling. Huh? <laughs> I have to have you on my team. Now it's up to the artists to decide which coach they would most like to work with. And you gotta decide. I have the power. That is the voice. I was trying to think of a way to rig up four chairs here, and my mark or somebody singing, they could turn it around. But I'm I'm, I'm not talented enough. I didn't have enough time, so I thought that that, that would be better. So the voice. But, but on my way back from Lima, I was just thinking, you know, the voice, that's pretty cool. How I'm, I talked to a lot of teenagers, so I was thinking, how could I, you know, relate some type of message with teenagers? So I had a great message for teenagers, and now since I'm talking to adults, I had to use smaller words and <laughs> talk slower. So <laughs> I'm just, just, just kidding. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But think of the voice. Have, have you ever thought, how many voices do you hear throughout the day? <laughs> what? Yeah, how, how, a lot. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think to me, I, I get up every morning at five o'clock, and I have, I haven't figured out how to use my phone to wake me up. So I have an old clock radio with the thing that kind of flips over every minute, you know. So at five o'clock, it goes off. I, um, but, and I have it to WBCL Christian music, and so I wake up to either a Christian song or somebody talking. I don't know how you guys wake up. Some of you may be a phone, or it may be a buzzer, it may be, you know, a voice. Something wakes you up. Some of you younger people, it may be your parents yelling up, hey, get up, get up, get up. So that's the first vo vo voice you hear. And then think of your routine in the morning. You know, if you got a big, a lot of kids in the house, there's probably a lot of voices going on back and forth, and you may turn the TV on. Sometimes I get up and I watch Sports Center or news or something, so I hear those voices. As you're making breakfast, you know, I know that at our house when we had the grandkids over, you know, what do you want? You want cereal? You want eggs? You want pancakes? You, you want apple juice? You want orange juice? 
quit picking on your brother. Quit hitting them. I, you know, all those different voices that, 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 that you hear, hear throughout the day. Think, think of your house, maybe now or maybe when, when, when your kid, kids were younger. And then getting ready. You're going to miss the bus. You're going to be late. We're leaving in a few minutes. Your ride's here, et cetera, et cetera. If you're on a bus, I imagine those buses are pretty quiet, I would think. You know, find, find, yeah, find out any talking there. And it, if you take your kids to school, there's probably talking or there's music or something going on. And then if you're a school kid walking into school, I imagine that's pretty chaotic, that first 15, 20 minutes before school, all these different voices. You go into a job, you know, maybe your boss is telling you what to do. The coworkers are talking about what they watch on TV, what they did last night, all, all this stuff. And then as you get in, you know, working with your coworkers throughout the day, what's going on, or if you're somebody in school. And I found out that, I just learned this, teachers get paid by the word. So the, the more words they say throughout the day, that, that they, get, they increase in pay. That's why Reams has a nice truck. No, but just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, 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 I mean, you know, teach, you know, teachers talk throughout the day, you know. And then if you're in a class, if you're in seven classes of the day, you hear your teacher, the coworkers, the hallways in between. And I've been in our school at lunchtime, and man, that cafeteria, it's, uh, yeah, I've turned my, if I had hearing aids, I'd be turning them down. I mean, just all those different voices through the day, and, and then, it, th then at the end of the day. If you're a kid, you may get on a bus and go home. If you go to practice, you know, coaches are worse than teachers. They talk twice as much as them, but, you know, it's just, you know, they talk. Your instructions and all this, or going home, and then it's supper time. You know, what do you want for supper? What are we going to make? Should we order pizza? You want pepperoni? Or, or, you know, just all this stuff, talking. Have you done your homework? You know, you do this, and then you may watch TV. You know, there's all this stuff go going on, plan planning the day. So all these voices, all this talk and talk and talking. And then a lot of people, when they go to bed, which you should be relaxing, you either have a TV on or a radio on or your phone or you're playing some type of game or something. So you go to sleep. Get up next morning, all over again. Start over, just, just, just those voices, voices. And then the voices you hear. I have to read this because I remember. This. Some of them are good, right? Some aren't. Some are uplifting, encouraging, you know, positive. Some will bring you down. They're awful. They're, they're, they're negative. Some matter. Some don't. Some are helpful and instructive. Some have no benefit what, what, whatsoever. And sometimes all the voices kind of run together. And I thought back, and I'm going to show my age, but some of you might know. Remember that Charlie Brown, where, was it Ch Charlie Brown's mom? Whenever she talked, wah, 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 wah. Yeah, yeah, that, or the blah, 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 whatever. You know, the, just, just those, all, those, all those different voices throughout the day that just go, get going in your head. And this is a question. For the right answer, you get another candy bar. I was going to get suckers, but Lisa said when they throw the, they, they might sail a little bit. So I thought candy bars. Okay. What is the one voice you hear more than all the others? Man, Bo, your hand went up for you. What? What is it? <laughs> and that, it could be. I can't imagine your sister have said, that is a great answer, but you don't get a candy bar. It's wrong. The one voice. I'm not going to call my own family. Okay, anybody, your one voice you hear more than anybody. Come on, you have to know this. It should be, but it probably isn't. But what? The one voice. Yes. Think about that. I mean, the one voice you probably hear more than any throughout the day is your own. Because if you talk to 10 people and they talk back, you're going to, you know, and, and, you know, you talk to them, you're going to talk 10 different people. And sometime at night, like I said, you know, sometimes you have voices in your head all night. Or whenever you hear something from somebody, you know, you have that thing called discernment. When they're talking to you, you know, a lot of times when people are talking to us, we're thinking and talking in our own head, you know, what they do, or you, or you talk back. So, so, that, so that is it. You know, sometimes make your head explode, you know, the, how, how, how many times you hear it. But, and I heard this earlier, but what is the one voice you should Hear more, m more than any, yes. Yeah, okay. I know, I, I, I know. It was Mrs. Shelby, but, but uh, <laughs> she, she would have gave it to you. And, and, and anyway, the thing, okay, or at least that that is the one you should pay attention to and li listen to more. And the Bible talks about that a lot. I'm going to go to one verse here, James one twenty two. 
Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. And there was a quote that I shared in Sunday school a lot, lot, last week from A.W. A. Tozier. He's an old time, um, has a great book, The Pursuit of God. You know, I, I recommend you read that. The driver on the highway is safe, not when he reads the signs, but when he obeys them. You know, because I said, you know, the voice you hear from God, you know, just, just, just obeying it. But I hear a lot, and I, and, and I say a lot to my, myself, how do, how do you hear God's voice? You know, what is, what is God, God's voice? Well, what does it sound like? Well, there's several ways. All, audible. You know, I mean, God, God, God talks. I don't know if anybody's ever, ever heard God talk to him. We, we, we knew it was God act, actually talking to you. But he, sometimes people say, well, I'm not hearing from God. I don't know what he wants from me. I don't know what my plan is. What, is, what, what does God want? So we, we would love to have him just be in front of us and shout in our ear and say, do, do, do this. Um, but God has spoke throughout Scripture, you know, back in Genesis, you know, and, you know, the fir first chapter where, you know, Adam and Eve walking, you know, in the garden after they've sinned. You know, God, you know, rhetorical question, I guess, where are you? You know, are you, why, why, why are you hiding from me? You know, he talked to Cain after he killed Abel. Where's your brother? You know, you go through there, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Elijah. You know, he's talked to all them. The Bible says it's audible voice. You know, he, he said it. Um, you know, the uh, other prophets, you know, God, God has talked to them. You get in the New Testament, after Jesus was baptized, when he came out of the Jordan, you know, God said, this is my son who I'm well, well, well pleased. Um, Paul, on the, on the way to Damascus, a, a lot of times through the book of the Acts, God can talk, but a lot of people say, well, that, that was then. That was Old Testament, or, you know, when, 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 when Jesus was around. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on this, but he talked a lot in the book of Acts, and I believe we're still in the book of Acts. You know, it's the Acts of the Apostle where you grow the church. You know, even though the Bible ended, you know, at a certain time, I think we're still in that book of Acts. We're still called to preach the gospel, share the gospel, li 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 live it out. And maybe God is talking to us, but with all them other voices, we can't really hear them, you know. But there's other ways God, God, God talks. I mean, and, and there's, sometimes we think it's a big, booming voice. And I go to, you know, 1 Kings 9, where, where we talks about that, where I look at, you know, the thunder and the lightning and, the, you know, all this stuff came, and it wasn't God. And all of a sudden, there's still a small voice, a little gentle whisper, you know, and that, and, and, and that was God. So sometimes we have to really tune in to, 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 to hear what God has to say. And worship music is great. That I love music. I wasn't gifted to be able to sing, or or play a, play an instrument. But I love lo, lo, love music. I love Casting Crowns. is probably, probably probably one of my favorite bands. I know Mark, Mark played them. And you know, there's, there's so many great worship songs. L last week we had the hymns. You know, the old hymns. I didn't grow up listening to old hymns. It's only been about 15, 20 years. But man, man, I love those. I mean, there's Christian rap. You know, I've heard those. It, you know, people like Skillet that are almost like hard rock Christian. There's all kinds, ki kinds of music that just has a great, great message for different groups. Um, so, yeah, and, and I used to take some of my lessons from songs with young people. I'd hear a song, and th that would be the, 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 the lesson, go word, word, word by word. Um, counsel of Others is, is a big one, too. You know, being in small groups of Bible studies, Bev talked about mentors, too, you know, the mentors. You know, if you're a mentor to somebody, you're counsel to them. But even if you mentor somebody, they can counsel you or even people, you know, close to you. I mean, you know, I love g going out to breakfast with Mark here and him. I know Mike and Scott and various pe 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 people in this room, you know, just from them. Even like, you know, Ju Ju Julius, you know, he's young, but boy, just the insights that, that, that he has. But you have to have that discernment. It has to come from, come from God. You know, if somebody tells you something that may sound great, but it doesn't line up with the Word of God, then it isn't God speaking. But yeah, it's just those the counsel of others, sermons. I mean, you get great message from sermon. Not today, but most of the time, you, 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 you're going to get some great messages. You know, the sermons, you know, videos, podcasts, all that stuff. Where there's there, there, there's there's so many preachers, and I have one one quick story. Um, Lisa and I used to go go go, go to a church in Lima. We went there for about 10 years. It was a smaller church. It started to grow, so we built a church by I-75. But in that 9 to 12 months where we was building the church, we met in Lima Senior High School. And uh, 
our pastor, a guy by the name of Randy, real, real, real great pastor, he was from Arkansas. And uh, he had a guest speaker come in. It was a young couple, late 20s, Eric and his wife. They were in his youth group in Arkansas, and they just lived in the back country of Arkansas, went about their own life, had two young kids. But they were speaking after the, uh, what, the hurricane or the superstorm Sandy that came in. What, I don't know how many years ago that might have been, eight or ten years. But they came in. God called them to move to New York and start helping people. So they packed up in Arkansas, moved to New York, started helping people. Construction during the day, they gave coffee to workers that were waiting waiting in line in the morning, went to different churches at night. And he was talking at the church about, yeah, he would like some help, you know, mostly financial and prayer. And and and, and I have a construction, construction background. On the way home, I was just thinking about that. Man, God was just talking to me. Man, I could, I could help them. I could help them. I should. That afternoon, I'm thinking about it. Then later that day, and Lisa can verify this, I told Lisa, I said, I think I should go to New York and help them. And Lisa goes, okay. And then I said, and I'll, ne I'll never forget this. I said, man, I better pray about it. And the look on her face, she goes, what are you going to pray about it for? Did God tell you to do it? I said, yeah. She said, well, then go. <laughs> you don't have to pray about it. I mean, she t he told you to go. Don't talk yourself out of it or try to come up with reasons. And I'm not saying that, you know, praying about something. If you're not sure about something, pray and ask God, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll let you. But God told me, but I was willing to bargain and try to talk talk, talk out, but i never forget that. God told you, don't pray, just go, you know, pray about what you're going to do, 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 do when you get there. So, it was, so I ended up going, and, 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 and it was a great time. And there's been other time in my life that I talk myself out of things. And I look back, I said, man, God wanted me to do that, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, I didn't do it. So th that's it. Prayer, like I said, get, get, get in on that. Prayer is, uh, you know, the prayer. When we pray to God, you know, whether we're praying for others, or people, pe people pray for us. You know, I told you that, 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 that sharp story was uh, pretty cool. But prayer is pretty much a conversation. And I think the reason we don't hear from God a lot when we pray is we pray and then we move on to something else, you know. Shut up and listen for a little bit, you know. You know, if you're going to pray for 20 minutes, you know, pray for 10 or 15, but listen for 5 or 10, you know, and then be open because God, God will talk to you through his prayer. But I believe the best way to hear from God is get, get, getting into this. That's why I encourage you to bring your Bible, have a Bible, have a, have, have, have a devotional. And I, um, there's just so many things about, and I'm going to read off these verses. If you are, if you are taking notes, I won't, I won't read them all. Deuteronomy 13, 4 is, uh, you know, the, 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 the first one, but the ones I'm going to read are a couple of them from John. John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And then John 10, 14, 16 is similar. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They, too, will listen to my voice, and there, there shall be one flock. And that's a great one for evangelizing, you know, you know to just you hear God's voice, share his, share, share, share his voice with others. There's Romans. This is the scripture part of the sermon. Yeah. Romans ten seventeen. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. And then there's going to be a couple in Hebrews. Hebrews three fifteen. As just had been said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the time of rebellion. They're talking about the Old Testament where the, man, the Old Testament is just full of God talked, people listened, they stopped listening, there was consequences. And then, yeah. and then Hebrews 4.12, and, 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 and this is a great one. If you think the Bible's not relevant today, it's all, it's all old school stuff. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and, and, and attitudes of the heart. And then, and then there's one, um, 
you know, Mark 1, 3, talk about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was that voice calling out, 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 out in the wilderness. God talked to him. His job was just to proclaim the way of Jesus Christ, which, which, is, our, which is our job al also. But there's many verses in the Bible that just talk about his voice, you know, hearing it. You know, there's ma ma many di different ways to hear it. And, I, and I'm going to close up with this stuff before we get Mark and Jill back up here. Voices we hear throughout the day are mostly unavoidable. You know, we need to have discernment. Listen and decide what's important and relevant, but don't tune out God or hit the moot button or the snooze button. Some people don't hear because they are not his sheep. Most, the most important question, you know, if you don't hear anything else I said today is this. Are you one of his sheep? Have you accepted him as, as, as your Lord and Savior? Do you, do you belong to God? Have you surrendered, surrendered your, your life to him? In John 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, and the gospel is pretty, pretty simple. Revive has a great Bible with it. FCA has a great, a great bracelet. It's pretty much God loves each, each, each and every one of us. But we've all sinned. We've all messed up. Jesus went to the cross for it, and now it's up to us. You know, what is, what, what is, is, is your decision? And I know Mark, Mark is going to come, come up here with the, uh, with, with, with the final song. And, uh, and, and I know he'll, he'll, he'll elaborate on this, but this is the time. And uh, it says that, you know, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, you know, it's a two-part thing, you know. You can confess, confess to God. You can, you know, tell somebody else about it, but you've got to believe in your heart. And each of you know in here if you've made that commitment. It's not a, I think, maybe, I'm not sure. It's, it, it's, it's one thing about the Bible and God. It's pretty much black and white, yes or no. So if you made that commitment, great, you know, ce celebrate. If you're not sure, take a little time here to reflect, you know, during, dur during this song, and there's people around here that'll, that, that'll, help, that'll help you with that today. So, so Mark, Jill, it's all yours. So this last song that we chose to share with you today just talks about that very thing that Steve was mentioning today, and that is um, the struggle that we go through as human beings, and it's real, and it's many voices that come at us, but uh, knowing that word of truth or that voice of truth and focusing in on that is what we have to do. To climb out of this boat of men Onto the crashing waves To step out of my comfort zone To the realm of the unknown Where Jesus is And he's holding out his hand But the waves are calling out my name And they laugh at me Reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed the waves that keep on telling me Time and time again, boy, you'll never win You'll never win But the voice of truth Tells me a different story The voice of truth Says do not be afraid And the voice of truth To me, and I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant. 
with just a sling and a stone surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors shaking in their armor wishing they'd have had the strength to stand but the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me reminding me of all the times i tried before and failed giant keeps on telling me time and time again boy you'll never win you never win Thank, th thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I love that song. I mean, I yeah, and that 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 that's my favorite song. I I could hear it all the time. But I just want to, like I said, keep listen li listen to that voice. You know, sometimes you can't help with the other stuff coming on. But man, all, all, always get back. Listen to that voice. Get 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 rid of all the noise, and that question. Like, like I said, that is a question. It needs to be answered sometime in your life. You know, today could be the day of salvation. But I urge you, do 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 not wait. If you're not sure, talk to talk to somebody. Talk to somebody about it. Okay, I'm gonna close this in, in in a word of prayer, and you're and then you're free to be dismissed. Dear God, I just thank that. Thank you for the message you, you gave me, and and I just thank you for your voice, Lord. Um, with all the stuff going on in life, let let, let us just l listen to your voice, whether it's in word or music or prayer or scripture, Lord. Uh, um, you you you're not limited to any to any one thing, Lord. Let, let, let's just continue to listen to you, and then whatever voice you have gave us. Let, it, let, let, let us share it with others, Lord. Let, let us just uh, share your voice, share your truth, share your love, lo love with each and every person we, we come in contact with because um, those different gifts I mentioned, uh, you know, pastors, teachers, uh, 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 apostles, uh, evangelists, we, we all have, have, have a role to play in that, and we can, all, we, we can all be those, Lord. Let us just continue to uh, uh, Realize our gifts, use our gifts to strengthen your, your kingdom. Bless everybody throughout this day. Uh, we're looking forward to Bev and Joe coming com, coming back ne next week. I pray that they're, they're having a great day. And just uh, keep us focused on your voice, Lord. Amen. Amen.